Research tells us that when a population is stressed, their willingness to try new things is limited. They'll visit the same restaurant, eat the same food, and choose the same wine, so to speak. Routine and experience provide stability in times of chaos. And as always, football imitates life. Or as I like to think of it, life imitates football. Though often seen through a satirical lens, the Rob Holding routine in Arsenal's hour of need this season has proved very effective. Holding has proved adept at coming in as a backs-to-the-wall defender to deal with aerial threats and snuff out late chances. Coming off the substitutes bench six times in the Premier League this season, Arsenal have won five of those games, conceding only one goal in the process with Rob Holding on the pitch, Rodri's late winner at home to Manchester City. I'm not bitter. But despite these often inspired cameos, a lot of Arsenal fans would probably tell you that if a decent offer arrived for Holding this summer, he should probably go. Some would say any offer would do. Even the most ardent Rob Holding fans probably aren't willing to let him out of the departure lounge for too long. And I think that tells us something. I think it shows that most Arsenal fans don't know how lucky we are to have Rob Holding. Let me explain. Rob Holding has seen his game time limited this season, and probably with good reason. Holding has played 90 minutes just 10 times in all competitions this season, as Benjamin White, Gabriel Magalhaes and Al have provided a respectable 13 clean sheets in the league. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. To assess Holding's empirical value then, we must consider what should we expect from a player who is now nominally a rotation option. The player will likely play a small percentage of the Premier League minutes and some cup football. So they should be able to provide cover for the players who play more, enabling rotation with as little drop off in quality as possible. They need the patience not to play every week. They need to be ready to come in at the drop of a hat, mid game or otherwise, and be a good enough professional to accept their role and not create a cultural issue. They would ideally have experience, be a calming influence and know their role in the team inside out. Sound familiar? Holding is not perfect but he is perfect for the part he now plays. Most crucially of all, Rob Holding's specific qualities make him a secret weapon who stands out from other rotational centre-backs at the top clubs. Though Arsenal will certainly need a player to come in and match Gabriel and White more stylistically at some point, be that Saliba or otherwise, Holding can be a different type of defender for different game states, surprisingly hard to find at the top level. According to data site FB Ref, Holding is in the top 1% for successful blocks and shots blocked, as well as the top 9% for clearances, all when compared to other central defenders in the top five leagues. He's also made zero errors per 90 this season, is rarely dribbled past, and tackles dribble as well. He's a safe pair of hands. For holding onto leads, sorry, so sorry, playing predominantly in your own third and looking to remain compact, he is the ace in our proverbial deck. In a 38 game league season, you need adaptability to different game states. And the kicker is that there's not many like him at the top clubs who fit a similar profile. If you're looking for comparability on the metrics I mentioned, the data has you looking at players like Grant Hanley at Norwich and Chris Smalling, not good enough for a top club. So why do those qualities make him special? Why is he a secret weapon? Look around. Manchester City have a group of expensively assembled centre-backs who are all dependable on the ball, but no one who is perfect to come on in a siege game state, hunker down and see out a game under intense pressure. You could argue they rarely end up in that situation, so why do they need one? But I bet they would have liked Rob Holding on 88 minutes against Real Madrid the other night. Chelsea lack that profile of player too, and while Liverpool rarely end up in that situation as their centre-backs are more well-rounded, it's a similar story there as well. Manchester United... If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. Moreover, if those clubs wanted to bring someone in who has those backs-to-the-wall qualities, considering most modern teams aim to build from the back through their first phase, which is not always that type of player's greatest strength, it would be almost impossible to go into negotiations for someone to only give them the amount of minutes holding plays, with the profile and quality you're after to tackle those game states, and indeed find someone who's willing to sign a long-term deal like holding has. Then, from a mental and cultural point of view, do you want someone to come in who is willing to accept that type of deal? You could then levy that argument at Rob Holding, Sure. But the reports around the training ground speak of an excellent trainer, a popular figure, and someone who advocates for their teammates, especially as an outspoken ally, something we need more of in football and more widely. To replace Holding, you'd probably only be able to promote from the academy or sign a young player with a high ceiling, none of which are as good as having the experience already there. The club even has an option to extend his contract to 2025. If it ain't broke, I realise I'm also slightly pigeonholing holding, holding as a one-dimensional old-school defender, only suitable for one game state, which is a little bit unkind on his abilities. That may have been his starring role this season, but that's certainly not all he can do, because the best part of all of this 
His subjectively, I think he's improving, but he's actually a much better all-round defender than people think he is. This data is from last season, as there was a bigger sample size in terms of minutes played, and again, credit to Scott Willis on Twitter. His strengths are obvious, but what might be less obvious is how well-rounded he is, as this shows, how progressive he can be, and his potential in terms of attack value added. His low dribble past and interception metrics may be explained by his different role last season, tasked with what we might now see as more of Benjamin White's responsibilities. But take a look at the data for Benjamin White, and you'll see that holding isn't too far behind, maybe for another video. The other side to all this is the cost analysis. How much does it cost us to keep holding around? According to SpotRack, Rob Holding is currently earning around £40,000 per week, an annual salary of just over £2 million per year. To put that into context of other centre-backs at the top clubs who've played 25 games or less in the Premier League this season, Joe Gomez at Liverpool earns £75,000 a week, Eric Bailly earns £82,000 a week, and Nathan Ake at Man City earns around £92,000 a week. The average Premier League player earns around £3.2 million in salary pre-tax. That's £1 million more than Rob Holding's salary. So holding is cost effective and reliable. Replacing him would be expensive and time consuming in a market where Arsenal already have so much to do. Money is money though. Character is everything. In a recent media day with Aaron Ramsdale completing responsibilities for the likes of BT Sport and Sky, he displayed excellent rapport with Aaron and a lovely open nature with the interviewers, often helping them by elaborating on their questions and offering more insight than they'd asked for. He speaks openly, clearly, and seems on board with Arteta's project. Taking part in another Sky Sports interview a while ago, he displayed an impressive awareness of the Arsenal women's team. He's clearly comfortable at London Colney. But in light of the new manager's deal, the most important thing is what Mikel Arteta thinks. Mikel said, his attitude, his commitment to the team, whether he plays every week or plays one minute, it's incredibly good. He's a really good influence for the rest. Thanks to him, we won the game. Mikel knows it's extremely hard to find someone approaching the prime of their career at 26, with qualities both on and off the pitch like Rob Holding, who, as I say, is ultimately a rotational centre-back. We are very lucky. Football is a squad game and it's becoming even more so. And there's a lot of mercenaries around, as Arsenal have discovered over the past few years. You don't compete for a league title or indeed win anything, with only 11 players. Characters like Mohamed Elneny and Holden create a supportive framework for the team to flourish. They love Arsenal. They support your wage structure, protect and nurture your young players as well as providing an example for them, and they give you reliability in performance. They may not be that first sip of Malbec, but you can't drink it without a glass. As for whether we should decide to move on from him at some point, there will probably come a time that that seems appropriate. But we've seen this season that even a few injuries threaten to derail the excellent work that Mikel and his staff are doing. Removing stability, removing routine and experience too soon could cause chaos and stress. I definitely want Rob Holding there next season to see out games for us. In a side full of kids, we need as many dads as we can get. None of this is to say Rob Holding is unambitious. I'm sure he wants to play more minutes. It's just saying let's appreciate what we've got, because holding onto holding just makes sense. I'm sorry it didn't cost 55 million, so it cannot be good. Let's keep drinking that same wine just as long as we can get it.